Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Assassin here with a video here today. Bring us a Photoshop slash After Effects tutorial, how to create your very own cool streaming hub, little thing hub, hopefully I have like on the bottom left of the screen or something like that. But as you guys know, the whole bottom overlay thing is out. If you're still one of those individuals, I love you, I appreciate you, but it's time to move on, it's time to upgrade. So the whole little streaming hub thing I think was popularized by people like BBI, and uh, they just do a killer job with all these simple creators and all that cool stuff. So I want to give my take on it, and I did not know how to do the, any of the coding or anything like that. So I didn't realize that Stream Elements actually houses that kind of stuff and makes it super easy for you guys. It actually has like an overlay builder, not a sponsor or anything like that, but it has like an overlay builder that looks super freaking dope. And hopefully I can show you guys here today as an example. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I'm going to start off inside Photoshop, move into After Effects, show you guys how to render it off, and then of course put it inside Streamlabs or Stream Elements, excuse me. Uh, later on so enjoy today's video if you guys do leave a like please or excuse me if you do like it be sure to leave a like all that good stuff and i'll just talk to you guys in the video so enjoy yourselves all right guys let's start off first with building the simple alert inside photoshop also quick note you'll probably hear an audio change in this video as i am recording this currently in new york and i just you know i might have might have forgot to move my files from la to uh new york while i'm over here visiting but just keep that in mind okay however this shouldn't actually take any more than a few minutes all you want to do is start off with a 1920 by 1080 p canvas inside Photoshop to start off with. Then with the rectangle marking tool, you want to create a nice little rectangle or basically a column for the alert that you like to put. So for me, I want to do my subscriber column first. Then I want to right click and fill it in with a darker color of your choice. And since I want two alerts being showcased at the same exact time, I'm going to actually add another box below at the same size by duplicating it by holding alt and dragging. Then, using the same rectangle marking tool, you want to make a skinny line going through your two halves and erase the left side just a little bit for a nice little fade. Then, once again, with the rectangle marking tool, I want to select the bottom half of my box and I want to use a soft brush. I want to take a black color and go over the top to make a nice simple drop shadow. Afterwards, you guys can add icons and a final few touches, but I would also recommend lowering the opacity to your two boxes to 96% for a little bit of a see-through action when the overlay is actually over gameplay. Lastly, use the crop tool, which is C in your keyboard, to perfectly crop the corners of your alert box so when placing it inside After Effects, everything will be a lot smoother. And for the most part, you're actually done with your alert hub. Your only next step in Photoshop is actually create a nice simple backdrop with a pattern or a texture that will represent each alert. So for me, I use the yellow background and a few stars to indicate a nice simple sub alert. Once you guys have your backdrops for your sub alerts where the name is going to be over, you guys are pretty much done after that and you guys are definitely ready to move on into After Effects. All right, so now that we are inside After Effects, I'm gonna open up our PS that we just saved by going to File. We're gonna go to where it says Import, File as well again, right? Then we're gonna click on our nice little Import PSD. We're gonna press Import. Now, when this table pops up, you just wanna have your um, Import Kind on Composition, Retain Layer Sizes, as well as Layer Options on Edible Layer Styles. Press OK. You'll notice in your Project Folder, you'll see a Composition, and then you'll see one that just says Folder. You wanna basically double click on the one that says Composition, just like so. And then you can see the importance now of why you should change your PSD cropping to where it says in your like, you know, save your PSD cropping to be perfectly fit of your overlay because right now in After Effects, you don't have to do that here and it's perfect for us and it makes the animation way more simple and easy. So what's one thing to creep in uh, keep in mind, excuse me, is that I'm on an eight second duration. This might be even lower by the end of the video, but for now I'm gonna keep it on eight seconds. As long as my frame rate is on 60. The way I ended up coming to this table right here, by the way, is where I right click on the timeline itself and the composition settings. So if yours is like one second, you obviously need to make it a little bit longer. I would say eight is a pretty good start, right? Now, if you do have groups, I guess in the group things in PSD and like in Photoshop, the groups also translate into After Effects as compositions. So if you're gonna change your settings here, I'll try to do it for you guys really quickly, right? Well, 10 seconds, right? If I scroll down, you'll see, if I make the timeline bigger, you can see I can't actually drag this out yet, right? So you have to do is you have to double click on the group itself, change the composition setting in this composition as well, right let me zoom this out for a second you can highlight the two right by control clicking on both of them dragging them out and then if you guys are the original composition you'll be able to notice that you can then drag it out as well so that's something you keep in mind because i know it's not something that probably not a lot of people understand or know but that's super simple right so let's go ahead and get this started because this main overlay stuff right here we don't need this right now because it's going to be a png right and uh stream elements this background here we don't need this as well uh, we could probably save it because we actually have the first thing we have to do is we're going to right click on this over here, go to new and then do solid, right? And we're going to make this solid pure white. Okay. This can be any color. Remember any of this stuff is all customizable, but I'm just going to make it pure white for myself. Press okay. So what I'll have is a pure white background here. 
as well as this group right here, which is our simple little yellow background we just made inside Photoshop. So one thing to keep in mind as well is if you don't see anything at all, just like you don't right now, you can see that if you just toggle the transparency grid, it'll make the transparency portion of it black. So one thing I do know for sure is when I drag this down, right, I got to make sure I keep in mind that, that star is still there. So it's not actually there when I render it out. Okay. So let's go ahead and start off with firstly is this uh, white background. Okay. So this white background here, the way we bring up our position keyframe is pressing P on our keyboard. That's what, what's one thing right there, right? Now this little stopwatch next to the word position is the actual keyframing enabled, right? So you click on that, you'll notice this little circle kind of pops up here as well as a nice little kind of diamond shape pops up um, on your timeline itself. So we're going to take this, put it at one second just like this and keyframe once again by just clicking back on this little icon right here, it'll add another keyframe as well. So I'm gonna have one at zero frames, one at one second or 60 frames, right? I'm gonna go back to the zero frames per second one. We're gonna take this, click on it, hold shift, drag it down. That'll make sure it's on a perfect axis for us, right? And you notice if I just kind of play it through, it's a very simple stagnant, very simple motion of this white background kind of coming into frame. So to make the actual movement not look so boring and just like, you know, blah, right? We're going to simply highlight the two keyframes, right click, keyframe assistance, easy ease, go to this tab right here, which is the graph editor, right? Now if this graph editor for yours will look exactly like mine. You want to right click on it and use edit speed graph. Yours might be on default edit value graph. Just for the record, I think this is a little bit better. Okay. So for me, just to look at. And I'm gonna zoom it in for a second. I'm gonna highlight the two keyframes by clicking outside the canvas, highlight the two keyframes just like so. You'll see these two anchor points will now have two yellow handles as well. We're gonna take the handles themselves, push them inward this way, push it inward this way. You can get off a of graph editor by clicking once again. You'll notice now this movement will be a little bit more fluid. It'll have a little bit more of that really kind of like that smooth feeling to it. That's exactly what we want. So now that we have this, I would say one second is pretty good for that timing there. Let's also go ahead and type in our text as well. Let's go new text and we're going to type in new subscriber. If this is a new donation. You can just type in new donation. But for me, new subscriber, the font itself that I'm using is Akira Bold or Akira um, Extended, by the way. I'm going to take my move tool, move it towards the middle, just like so. Right now we got new subscriber in there. So now that I have this, I want to take this text as well and also do the same exact thing that I did with the white background to the actual text. So. P for position, let's click here. Let's click at one second as well. So that way it's all at the same time. Boom, so I have two keyframes of positions. Take this one, the first one over here, right? I'm gonna zoom in, make sure I'm actually on it. I am, take this word, click, hold shift, drag it down. So you'll notice you'll have the white background pop up as well as new subscriber pop up, pretty perfect. So we're gonna do the same as that thing as well. Highlight two keyframes, easy ease, graph editor, highlight, zoom in for a little bit so you can see a little bit better, right? Drag it in drag it in, we'll go back and you'll see nice smooth new square motion pops up and this is exactly what I want. So you can guess it, we're gonna do the same exact thing once again. So I'm gonna say this new subscriber thing is gonna stay for around maybe a second and a half or so. So I'm gonna go to the one second and 45 frames, okay? I'm gonna keyframe both the position for both of them. So my background and my text, I'm gonna keyframe it again. So keyframe, keyframe. So you have the same keyframe at one second as you have at one second and 45. Uh, milliseconds, right? So um, it's around 1, 145. You don't have to be perfect, but I just want to kind of end around the two second mark. So at two seconds though, so you have a keyframe here stopping that fact that if you would have just put a keyframe right here only, that this is only going to address to what's going on here. But since we put another keyframe right behind it, it won't like register the fact that it has to move until that portion right there, right? So you guessed it. We're going to take it, drag this up here. Right, we're gonna take the white background, drag it up as well, and we're gonna give it a little bit of an offset, meaning I don't want them to both go up at the same time. So I'm gonna take this keyframe for the white background, move it a little bit forward, right? So you'll notice it'll be saying new subscriber, right? And then it'll go out, right? At the same sort of time, but as well as it's kind of a little bit more delayed. And I think that's pretty good. So I'm gonna say a little bit longer might be a little bit more better. So I'm gonna say at two seconds, that's gonna start going out. So boom new subscriber, boom, you'll see the name. And let's go ahead and kind of put that name in there too. So the name play we just made is that yellow background. So we're going to take this group, bring it up, right? We want that in front of everything. So this is where you want to make sure that portion of that, that star is not seen. So I'm going to take the same exact thing, do the same exact thing, position, right? We want this to come in around the same time as this, right? So we want to say around here is we want to start to see the actual yellow background. So around two seconds as well as we can start doing the animation as well again. So P for position, 
Let's go ahead and turn it on, take position here. We'll move a little bit forward because we can fix that afterwards, but move a little bit forward, position it right here as well again. So two keyframes, right? At this keyframe here though, we're gonna take it, drag it down. Again, let's toggle this on. Make sure it's net star is not being seen, perfect. So you'll see, right for now, it's kind of like boom, and then boom. It's kind of slow, kind of awkward. So what we're gonna do is of course, we're gonna start saying, yeah, we want this to be there a little bit earlier, right? I think that's pretty good. So it's also easy, easy keyframe right here, right? Let's go into here. If I knew how to, like, I can't remember how to clip like that, but what I should have done is with this PSD that I have over here, is I should have just grouped it all together and be one layer. That way you can't see and just like cut it out. You know what I mean? Like cut this layer out. So that way that star wasn't there. I wasn't thinking about it, but now that you know, don't make that same mistake, but that's just how I'm gonna get rid of that for now. But we're gonna just kind of say whatever for now, but you get it, right? So it pops up. Boom, pops in, perfect. So now I'm gonna say I want it to last around six seconds. So I'm gonna say wrap this keyframe right here. We're gonna say, yo, let's have this be keyframed position right here, right? And we'll also have a keyframe at six seconds right here, right? And at this frame at six seconds, we're gonna take this and just drag it all the way out, just like so, because that other bottom star is not being shown. Perfect, so you're gonna see it, right? Is new subscriber, boom, we can show the name right for a little bit and then boom it goes away after six seconds so i made sure it's at six seconds that way the duration itself can be very simple in the sense that we can just kind of say yo in stream elements um we just say duration around the alert is six seconds perfect makes it super easy for us so the last thing i want to end up doing is putting a motion blur on all this stuff so i'm gonna click this right here this motion blur icon if you don't see these icons right here you want to make sure you switch modes right if you see this little kind of, uh, how do you say, dash to this, that means you have to actually go into the composition again. So double click, go to the composition, take these, make sure this is on motion blur. That's the motion blur icon. Make sure they're selected, right? Go back to here. That's why you can't click it here, by the way. But we click over here as well. Click here as well. So now everything is motion blurred. But to enable motion blur, you want to make sure you click this right here. If this is not on, when you render it out, it will not show, right? Make sure that is enabled. And I also believe composition settings advanced your shutter angle right here is the actual sort of amount of blur that occurs. So if you wanna put this up, right now it's at 180, so you'll notice right here, you can see how that kind of looks right here. It looks pretty freaking dope. I think that's pretty perfect, but if I were to throw this up to like, let's just kind of go crazy for advanced through 360, right? You can see how much it gets blurred out. So it all depends on what you're looking for. It might look good to you, but for me, I think 180 is a pretty good default number. That's what that motion blur is right there. Makes it look a little more crisp, right? Boom. Boom, we got a little space there that works for me. And then boom, it goes out. Perfect. So that is pretty much done. Now the way we're gonna render this out is we're gonna go to file. We're gonna go to export and we're gonna be using render um, or add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. Now this, you wanna make sure you have the web and format downloaded. I think it's not default. So I will give you guys the description. Um, in the description, I'll give you guys the actual download to WebM. But what will happen is you're gonna open this up. We have to switch the format to WebM because WebM makes things a lot more smaller if you're using AVI or like anything else realistically or time, what is it, QuickTime? Um, it's gonna be too big. I think Stream Elements uh, kind of like default size is about 30 megabytes is your maximum size. So you wanna click on this, right? That'll change our format. <clears throat> Sometimes the dynamic link thing as well takes a little bit too long. So keep that in mind. You might have to reset it every now and again. It doesn't happen too often for me now, but before, kind of annoying, but this time it should work, right? Boom, it opens it up. We'll go to format, changes to WebM. We're gonna take off export audio because we have no audio on. We're gonna go where it says method on consent, uh, constant quality, right? We're gonna take this uh, constraint quality. Now the constraint quality, you wanna take the bit rate itself, move this towards the middle. So right in the middle of here and here, so around 8,000 or so is a pretty good number to go with. We're gonna scroll down a little bit. We're gonna use include alpha channel. That'll make sure it's transparent. And we also wanna do use maximum render quality, boom. And all that is all you have to do. Change your name if you guys need to. We're gonna change it to tutorial one, right? Then we're gonna press okay. We're gonna click this button here. It's gonna render it out. It's gonna be pretty quick as well. And now I'm gonna take this render. We're gonna move into stream elements. We're gonna put all this together and make it look super cool and clean. So I'll show you guys right now.
All right, guys, so we are now inside stream elements. I'm gonna go to where it says my overlays to get this started over here. I already, of course, have one, by the way, but I'm gonna to where it says create blank overlay. Now, when you guys get into here, we're gonna make our resolution 1080p. That works perfect. We're gonna press start. So don't get too, don't get too scared. It's literally not hard whatsoever. I'm gonna make it super simple for you guys. You ready for this? So we're gonna click this little plus button down here. We're gonna click on this and we're gonna to go to where it says static and custom, and we're gonna do add an image. Right, this image here is the one you should be saving as a PNG24 when you're inside this right here. So this image here is this image right here, right? Not this one, but this one. Right? Remember this page? We want to save this as PNG24. Make sure transparency is enabled, and that is the PNG that's going into here right now. Okay. So with this image right here, we want to click on it one more time. Static image. I'm going to find that image by clicking on the X for a second. We're going to do set image. And we're going to click on this, right? By the way, it's not going to be popped up in here. You have to drag it inside. I already have it inside for us, right? Click on this, press submit, just like so. Now I have my image right here, which is pretty perfect. The first thing I like to end up doing is since I know this is not a 200 by 200, I think it's around 440 or something like that. So we're going to do, we're going to exit this by clicking on layers for a second, right? We're going to go to where it says uh, position and size. So we're going to take this where it says 200 and 200. We're going to make this 400 and 400. Well, this can be 200, excuse me. All right, I'll make this 400 and I'll make this one. Is it 100? It should be. Yeah, 100. So I'm going to say it could be that. That's a pretty good size. So now let me change that size here. I'm going to go back to where it says layers, right? I think everything else is literally simple here. But if you want to make sure everything is perfectly in the middle, you can also go to size one more time, right? And just do center widget. Perfectly fine for us. We can take this and kind of move our. Can we move this a little bit? Can I do that? Actually, I've not like done that before we'll say whatever that works it's kind of a little offset it's bothering me a little bit but right now our layers here you see our image one that's perfect so with image one we also want to do this little panel right here we know where it says engagements we want it to be a not engagement but labels we want subscriber so we have latest subscriber we want latest your newest subscriber right so that's what i want to have inside my panel so i'm going to do that just like so right now that i have this this is going to sit in the middle here Right. So for this, I don't want to actually have the name, the la latest subscriber name. I think the icon itself is good enough for me. So if your icon and make sure your icons that you're choosing, of course, really much. So how do you say um, showcases at least what it's sort of about that people can get the idea. Right. Boom. I'm going to erase all that other stuff and only keep the word name. Right. So I can take this now and kind of use my arrow keys as well to fix it. Pretty perfect. I'm going to say that works for me and i'm not going to do the new donation one but i'm just going to keep this as an example okay so you're going to have two layers so far you're going to have one that says your name uh excuse me image one which is your uh, first image of course right now the second one will be the name which is the of course like i just said the subscriber icon the subscriber sort of like recent subscriber thing then what we're going to do is going to click this little, uh, little plus button down here again go to alerts do alert box now for this one i want this to be my subscriber alert only so i'm going to uncheck everything else only subscriber alerts checked right i'm going to click on this little cogwheel we're going to go to where it says this little right here. I'm going to clear this video. I'm going to change this video and I'm going to change it to the video. Not this one, but we have another one as well. Let me drag that one in. Okay, perfect. Now that I actually uploaded the correct one, I'm going to click on this and press submit. And the first thing I want to immediately kind of do is I'm going to take off the sign for a second. It might be a little bit too loud for the, oh, well, I have no, my speakers are not on, right? The first thing I want to end up doing is I'm going to take this. I'm going to change my layout to be the first one. The first option is what I want to select. And the second thing I want to do is I'm actually going to exit out for a second. Click back on this. Oops. Click back on the cogwheel here or the position, excuse me, right? So the settings, when you click back out, this is where your submission, uh, your, uh, how you would, of course, go back inside, click on the cogwheel one more time. But I wanted to exit out. I'm going to go to where it says position and size. And I'm going to change this to 400 by 100, I believe it was as well. And we're also going to do center widget, right? As you can see, you can't probably tell what just happened, but it moved from up here to down here. So now if I were to do emulate, I want to click on that. Do subscriber event, since it is a one subscriber kind of uh, notification, click on it. You'll notice that, boom, it's perfect. It shows up right where it needs to be. And we don't have to really worry about anything too much, right? So go right there and it'll kind of leave. Right. So what we want to end up doing is also putting our text in as well. So right now our text is basically not showing up, which is of course a problem. And we also want our duration to kind of say, Hey, how long is this going to take for our text to show up? So there's two things I want to see really quick. So I'm gonna go back to my after effects. Okay. Now in my after effects, I want to say the text should start popping up at around, let's just say two seconds, two and a half seconds or so. Right. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. Okay. So that's where the text should be starting to pop up. So we're going to go back to here. Right, we're gonna go to where it says settings. We're gonna go back into this cogwheel right here. We're gonna go where it says text settings right here. Now, for some reason, on your advanced default, we're gonna take the margin, throw this all the way down to zero, right? Just like so, right? So, what's gonna happen here? Let me just do the quick little em uh, emulate. I have to click it a few times for a second, 
right? Now you can see it's kind of perfect where it needs to actually be. So what I also want to do, take the text, right? Let's go to here. Let's also make sure that we can change our uh, animation to do no animation at all. I don't want no pulsating or anything like that. I also want to say, hey, I want my custom uh, text to actually say something different. We're going to go out for a second. We're going to take this, the alert message, just get rid of everything else that comes after. We just want the name itself. So what's going to happen here is if it pops up again, right? One second, hold on. It's a little bit too long. Let's do it again. Boom, you see it's now only just the name itself. I can just take this now, I'm gonna just do it a couple more times again, right? I can take this now, see the eight, duration of the alert should be around six seconds, we know that, right? Let's do that, six. And we also wanna make sure that we go into it and we're gonna go back to the text setting itself, take where it's at the line height. I can just take this and start scrolling it down while it's actually still playing and say, hey, I wanna put it right in the middle, that's perfect for me, right? And I also wanna go ahead and say, let's take the shadow text off, let's make the color itself white, right? So it shows pretty well, okay? That's perfect the way I want it. So as well as that, I'm gonna do the animation one more time for you guys, because you kind of keep seeing it. So you can see it's not white. Of course, you wanna see it here. You wanna see it right there, which is perfect, right? So we wanna make sure we change the duration of the actual text and how, like, how long it takes for it to kind of pop up. So we're gonna do that. I believe it's under advanced, and we're gonna scroll down for a second, right? And it's not under advanced. Where is it again? Hold on. Okay, so it's not under advanced, it's under when we just kind of click this to kind of drop this down. It's under animation settings. So we want the text appearance offset to be around two seconds, right? So we're gonna go two seconds and around maybe like 2.3 seconds is pretty perfect. So what happens here if we do this again, right? Boom, the text is still showing. Hold on, text appearance, I meant to put on this one, wrong one, right? Super low, okay? Boom, do this, right? Now what should happen, it should be completely empty. Now it's empty, you just see a new subscriber, Perfect, then the lane will actually end up popping in. So with this, I want this to be the enter animation. I want it to kind of, since we have everything sliding up, I want to say, hey, for it to enter, I want it to slide in, but go up, right? Then after the end, I want it to also slide in, uh, but like up as well again. So hold on, slide out, excuse me. Slide out, but up, perfect, right? So I'm gonna do that one more time. Boom, you see, nothing's gonna happen here. Then we will kind of slide in with it, right? The delay is a little bit too long right and you'll see it kind of slide out but i see the text disappearance offset needs to be let's say that's pretty good we also kind of kind of scroll this down a little bit so it's kind of like a like a you know a rinse and repeat kind of thing to see what ends up working right one more time right the offset is a little bit lower that's pretty good and i would say the disappearance is a little too slow i'm gonna say one second or so should be where this ends up being at let's go with this go back to the one boom new subscriber just popped up Boom, and then should kind of fade out with it as well, just a little bit. That's pretty good. It's probably a little bit too fast. I want to say a little bit slower. And after that, we do it one more time. Let's see if this works, right? New subscriber, boom, it comes up, and then it kind of goes out with it a little bit more. That's pretty good. Perfect. That works for me. So what ends up happening here is this is pretty much the end of the tutorial. I think this is pretty much done. What you can do is to preview this. We're going to go to preview, right? We're going to take our overlay name. We're going to call this tutorial. Right now, the preview, we're gonna click this right here. This will be the actual stream elements code that you'll use. It doesn't really matter for me. You can see it, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna use it, right? But this will be the stream element code. Also, make sure you save it as well. So, I'm gonna go back to my OBS, right? And uh, what I'll try to end up doing for you guys right here is me putting it on. So, I'm gonna kind of walk through it myself so I can kind of give you guys a heads up. So, I'm gonna go right click on sources, go to add, then I'm gonna go to where it says, uh, what is it, browser, right? Browser. After browser, I'm gonna name the browser whatever I wanna name it, press OK. Then I'm gonna take the actual browser URL, copy and, or paste that in there, right? Then I'm gonna press OK again. So you should see it's sometimes a little bit a little bit buggy. What you might have to do is make your browser settings the, the width and height itself like double of what it actually is. I believe uh, default is 800 by 600. We're gonna go with 1800 or 1600 by 1200. Press OK. And what should happen here is you'll be able to see your actual overlay a little bit easier. Um, and what you'll do is hold Alt on your keyboard. Then you can take the actual corners of everything and just kind of move it forward, or excuse me, squeeze it in, right? With holding Alt, you can size it perfectly the way you need to size it, right? And then you can just then let go of Alt, just make it a little bit bigger, have it in your corner. And if I want to test it out for a second, all I end up doing is I'm gonna do test. And for my test, it works perfectly on my side and it should work also really perfect on your side. And that is how you guys will end up 
creating your own simple kind of alert box area that kind of looks really clean the uh, I call it the alert hub right got, again shout out to VVI those guys killed it and they gave me the idea for this so I thought yo share it with you guys hope you guys enjoy it and do it I thought I had to do so much more coding the reason why this world took so long I wanted this like a year and a half ago I just didn't know the coding for it I didn't know stream elements was what this was and fortunately I found out now you don't have to make the same mistake as I do and you guys can just use stream elements have a lot of fun with it and enjoy yourselves so with that being said I love you guys I'll talk to you guys later since so HQ out don't forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking better guys later much love and if you guys enjoyed the video please sure to leave a like if you guys want to comment down something below you want to see what you do please let me know and uh yeah that's it shout out love you guys peace